You're now listening to the Zod and Drea podcast. back hey what's up people what's going on back for a new podcast of course and it was uh, an exciting weekend for us uh you're gonna hear all about it and, and i think an exciting week f- well and a, uh, a week if you will for i yeah. think the entire country i think so i think so on our la- last podcast uh which was broadcast um for tuesday mm-hmm. uh, which was election night we had a special going on about um you know hillary clinton versus donald trump and obviously you know, it's been a week, so we now know what the results of that was, and Donald Trump will become the president of the United States. Yeah, that's a hard statement it's, for me to it's say. It's a hard statement for anybody to accept. I mean, we know this guy from TV shows, movies, Playboy videos, um, you know, his buildings with his name emblazoned all over it, uh, reality TV shows, you know, basically anything that he can hawk, anything that he can hawk. And throw his name on and make a dollar for himself without, um, you know, putting anybody else, I guess, um, in front of him. Because, I mean, well, I guess he puts everybody in front of him. He puts nobody behind him. <laughs> um, you know, he'd rather they get rolled over than he, do, he does, you know, besides his kids. It's like, this is the guy who's going to wind up running the United States. For four years. For four years. And, um, you know, that's the result. Um at some point, we're going to have to accept that as the result. Um, but, you know, what comes forth uh, after that, you know, hey, that's up to them. Yeah. And I know, I mean, and for all the listeners out there, I don't know how you've been coping with this week. I've had pe- a lot of uh, people I know in our lives that are just depressed, um, saddened, confused, angered. Um, but I think as the week has, has um, continued on, that has evolved into trying to be a little bit more proactive now. Like, all right, and this is this is what has been dealt to us. So, what are we going to do about it now? Yeah. So we'll get into that. Um, the way that we uh, coped for that night, because we were just uh, too much on our edge of our seats, was um, we watched uh, a nice throwback Halloween H two O, and uh, that's going to wind up being our movie review this week. So, uh, you know, if you haven't seen uh, the Michael Myers film that was, I believe, 1998 with Jamie Lee Curtis, um, mm-hmm. LL Cool J, Josh Harnett, uh, Kristen Williams. Um, uh, Ant-Man. And Ant-Man. No, no, no. Ant-Man oh. wasn't in that one. He, oh, he was in the one before it. But, uh, <laughs> I got you confused. Know, anyway. <laughs> well, let, let's, let's, let's get into it. Okay. So, so yeah, ahead. to deal with the shock of Tuesday, I know for us, we just wanted to get in a happy place. You know, so no CNN, no news at all. And what I know one of my happy places to go to is watching past seasons of Will and Grace. That's yeah. one of my favorite go to shows. Will and Grace just makes me laugh. It is it is just silly for me and I love it. So we watched a few episodes of that and then after that we watched Halloween H two O. Yeah, so in case you're not caught up, you know, where you've been for the last <laughs> you know, who who knows how long. Um Halloween H2O is 20 years later after the original Halloween, which took place in 1978. So we are talking about the original Jamie Lee Curtis back, you know, in her iconic role as Scream Queen, um, Laurie Strode. Mm -hmm. So she's back. And what was funny was uh, Drea, I had introduced Drea to the Halloween movies pretty recently. And I made her watch one, two, four. And part three is a season which had nothing to do with Michael Myers, in case uh, the horror fans know that. I watched her watch one, two, four, five, and made her watch Halloween H2O, where they said, basically, you know, forget about the last few that happened. You know, <laughs> four, five, I think it was what, four, five, and six. Yeah, four, five, and six. Uh-huh. Um, they were like, you know, forget about that. Just think of one and two, and then Halloween H2O, you know. And being that Dodd's such the uh, Halloween aficionado, I totally trusted into what he suggested, and I got into it. You know, it creeped me out. It wasn't gory. It wasn't It wasn't disgusting like some of the horror flicks that are out right now. It, it, it was just a little creepy and a little edgy for me. And I like that a little bit. I like that. I like to get scared a little bit, but not like freaked out where I got it, you know, where I can't sleep at night. It's one of the more fun ones, too, in case you haven't seen it. So, of course, 
we skip three, four, five, and six, seven, no, what about six, and we head right into H2O. So basically, after the last one, Loomis chased down Michael Myers in the hospital, blew him up, boom, he thought he was dead. Nah, nah. Somehow Mike got, you know, he got out, and he, he's, been, <laughs> he's been haunting people and shit, he's been fucking around, and what it was was um, they started narrowing down the number 17. And that's what it was. Um, mm, that's right. Jamie, you know, like um, Laurie Strode's sister, Judith, she got killed by Michael when she was 17. Mm-hmm. Then Michael went after Laurie Strode when she was 17. And it's like, why would she be here? Oh, her her son is 17. So she's like, oh, you know, she started panicking. And sure enough, here he comes the boogeyman. And who was her son again? Josh Harnett. Oh, Man, you remember that dude? Like he He's back. He's back now because he's, uh, what was that show? Which one? Uh, on on uh, Showtime. Or is it HBO? HBO uh, with Eva Green and, uh, and oh, Mr. Claire. Yeah. Remember, he's the Wolfman. Um, um, a Penny, Penny, Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful, good one. Yeah. You know, he's back. So he's, he's Penny <laughs> Dreadful in case you haven't seen it. I forgot about that. Josh Harnett. <laughs> but we also got LL Cool J in this movie, mm-hmm. you know, because he's Ronnie the security guard. Uh, and we also got Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, yeah, Young, he was in he, it for was, like a minute. <laughs> he was in it for a minute, you know. He, he, tried, to, he tried to hold it down. Mm-hmm. And he, Michelle Williams, did she win an Oscar? I don't know if she won an Oscar. I'd have to look that up. But um, Or at yeah. least Oscar nominated, right? I don't know. For Bro- she I been. think Brokeback Mountain. You're right. Nominated for three Oscars. Ooh. Three Oscars. This girl was getting chased by Michael Myers <laughs> and is nominated, was nominated for three freaking Oscars. Yo, Halloween makes stars. She was nominated for My Week with Marilyn, uh, Blue Valentine, and Brokeback Mountain. You're right. Yeah. And she won a Golden Globe. Golden but Globe. But before she did all of that... Michael Myers was going to kick her ass. She was just a horny kid stuck at her school for the weekend for trying the weekend. to get it on with their guy. That's it. All you want to do is just get it on. That's it. You know, you and know. then here's, you know, Lori Strode's crazy brother again coming here, <laughs> driving his crazy car. But, I mean, Lori Strode's, well, Jamie Lee Curtis's character, did I pronounce her name yes. right? Yes. She kicked major booty. Yeah, yeah, like, she, was she that's, that's, owned that's it. What she I does. loved it. And she looked great in this movie. Man, oh, and I remember when it came out. This is 1998 when it came out. So this is a good throwback. But when it came out, everybody was excited because it was like, you know, the band is back. You know, except for except for Donald Pleasance, unfortunately. He had died oh, yeah, uh, right yeah, after mm-hmm. part seven, uh, part six was made. So, you know, shout out to Donald Pleasance and uh, shout out to Billy Bush. But, um, you know, <laughs> always a shout out, <laughs> even though he wasn't even in it. <laughs> Did you see the Access Hollywood van in the parking yeah, lot or something? It was there. It was there. <laughs> Michael killed him. Thanks, Michael Myers. <laughs> anyway, if you get a chance to you know, check out a throwback like Halloween H2O, just watch it, it because great. it will make your day go a lot better, especially in a crazy ass election like we just had. It was great. Talking about crazy elections, but let's talk about our weekend real quick. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll let you break it down. Well, we uh, we're in Vegas. We actually just got back, and we were in Vegas for a, a half marathon, spon- uh, and it was one of the rock and roll series half marathons. And this was Zod's ninth half marathon this year, and oh, it tenth. was ten. Yep. Well, well, for rock and roll though. For right? rock and roll is my ninth, but for complete tenth for complete tenth. Uh, yeah. And this was my sixth. Your sixth, yeah. Rock and roll um, and half marathon. And it was so great. It was my first time doing the Vegas run. This was your fourth time, right? It was doing my fourth time in a row doing the rock and roll for Las Vegas. It's just a wild ride. It was at night, so they shut the strip down, and you're running down the strip, and there's so many people that are just randomly there cheering you on. You got runners that are dressed up as Vegas. I, I mean, not Vegas. What do you call it? Um, Elvis. I don't know how many Elvises. I saw. There are a lot of Elvis. Elvis loves to run these half marathons. <laughs> Who would have thought? Elvis <laughs> loves it. Brides. Um, there are a lot of brides, grooms, um, people together. The crowd was just exciting. And it was one thing that, see, I've experienced this four times now. Um, but, you know, before I did that, it was three times at the time. So when I was telling Drea, yeah, you've got to do this run, you know, she was very excited about it anyway. Um, then we get there. Um, and once we start running it, like, she just got into the excitement. She saw what it was. The lights. It's like it's like lights, camera, action. If you have not run the Las Vegas Strip, where it's closed down in honor of you, basically, mm-hmm. and run up and down it, yeah, sure for thirteen miles, but whatever, um, or for the marathon. A shout out to the marathoners too, oh because you know, they, they they ran all over the place. I would still be there. You know, and then the 10 K people, they were right. there. I mean, respect to everybody because we saw. I mean, the first guy we saw had you know a blade for mm-hmm. a foot. 
you know, that's what keeps us really motivated in uh, doing these half marathons. It's like it's one step at a time. It's just distance. But if you can get into one of these really fun rock and roll ones like the Las Vegas one, which had, I think, what was it, 44,000 participants? Yeah, across the globe. It just wasn't people from the United States. I mean, we came across people from France, from Germany, from, I think there was even from Spain. Like, it was just the globe descended on there. It was great. Yeah. So it was crazy to see um, not just all of the runners, because I love seeing all the runners. I love seeing old, young, whatever, all the marathoners and half marathoners, you know, everybody sitting there on the same journey that you're on, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, But then seeing them finish, see, the one good thing that was really great about this one, as opposed to the last three that I did, is the weather was absolutely incredible. It was even warmer. Normally, it was always cold. So this was just a really... Well thought out, well designed plan. And they changed it slightly when you go into North Vegas and you run into the neighborhoods. So they changed it slightly, but it was such an easy, flat, yeah, it was run, flat. very flat. And watching all the bands, who who did we see? We saw Cher, we saw Kiss. We saw. Yeah. I forgot about the Cher impersonator. <laughs> yeah, the that Kiss impersonators. So <laughs> and I mean, we just like she had a great attitude the entire time. In fact, even though I've run these things a million times, whatever I've done, and I'm used to them. I had to keep up with Drea. She was she did really, <laughs> really well. Um, you know, me, I was like, yeah, I'm just lazy. And she just was just pushed. She ran a lot. I mean, granted, her <laughs> I have little strides, but yeah, I got her, her little strides. Like, basically <laughs> she's running shorty. and I'm and I'm walking. <laughs> but you know, still she was doing it and I was keeping up at a really good pace. And um, you know, we got our medals. In case you haven't seen it, um, maybe we'll go ahead and post them on um our Facebook, uh, yeah. our Zod and Drea pages where you can see the medals that we won. And, uh, you know, if you guys are ever in the mood or want to be included in any of these things, we might be uh, planning something um, in January for a 5K for everybody to get involved. So uh, look out for that. But you want to talk about what we heard outside after we were done? So, well, that, that was on Saturday is what we heard, right? It was Saturday. Yeah, so Saturday. No, 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 no. no. It was, uh, yeah, it was Saturday. Yeah, so so Saturday. this is after the 5K, mm-hmm. yeah. So we did a 5K first on Saturday evening. We get back to our hotel room. We're at Bally's, and we're winding down because we know we got to do the, the half marathon the next day. All of a sudden, you hear this noise outside, and we're thinking it's like the Vegas noise, right? You know, people shouting and screaming. Look downstairs, and we're like on the 22nd floor. Look all the way down, and it, it is a constant stream of protesters, anti-Trump protesters that were marching all the way to a Trump Tower. So, of course, we kind of looked at each other and just said, let's do it. So we joined them. And it was a fantastic experience to be with everybody in with the same mission, same focus. And that is just to voice their concerns and fears of what what could be and to just empower ourselves to make sure what the fear could happen doesn't happen. Please listen carefully. Once again, make sure you listen to the Zod and Drea podcast by subscribing to one of the following podcast methods, iTunes, Google Play, or YouTube. Visit our website at www.zodandrea.com to go directly to the links, or if you choose, you can listen to each podcast episode directly on the website under their individual posts. Want to get involved and have your voice heard on the next podcast? Then be sure to tune in to the question of the week on our website, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram page. And dial in and leave a message on our voicemail at 323-963-4221. If you're an advertiser who would like to have your 30-second or one-minute placement on our podcast or YouTube episode, please contact us at info at zodandrea.com and we'll send you a price list. Space is limited for each episode. The next podcast might even have you as a featured guest. Tune in, check us out, and get involved. All right, all right, all right. So let's get right back into this because um, the topic that uh, we are here today for is, is the world ready for President Donald Trump? And it's like for me, look, I'm a liberal. I'm very liberal, and it's not even right to even say that out of my lips. But, you know, um, a president is somebody who's supposed to be respected. They're supposed to be respected as a symbol of the United States, just like the flag is, um, you know. So for people to disrespect the president, he would have had to have done something awful in the name of the country Mm -hmm. to me. Um, A flag is just a flag and it sits there and it's supposed to unite, whatever. I will kneel. I will Colin Kaepernick the hell out of a flag because of what it represents and it doesn't represent all. But 
it's still a symbol of what you make of it. It can be a symbol of hope, be a symbol of division. You know, it's what you make of it. Donald Trump as a symbol of a president to me um, and to a lot of other people is fear. And that's because of the campaign that he he um, went on. I mean, he, he wrote on a campaign of fear that the, the world, the, the planet, not even the planet, I'm sorry, the country was disintegrating into this abyss where, you know, monsters were coming up from the ground and you walk outside for black people and they're shooting you and these Mexicans are coming out and raping you and, you know, all these immigrants are taking all your jobs and, you know, the Obamas have destroyed this country. And God, like, I mean, if you look out of your window, Armageddon is happening. This is a Trump campaign in order for him to become president. Now that he has it, all of a sudden he's starting to soften some of his stuff. Yep. So I'm wondering what's going to happen to all the people who voted him in because they were loving it. He divided the country in order to then only change his position on some like, oh, whoops, you know, I sounded like a dictator. Maybe I better not take that stance. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, he takes a transition team and he starts putting dictators and bullshit into these positions. And that's who that's what I'm fearing right now is seeing the past few days, his announcing of who is going to be part of his cabinet. And the um, spin, or the, I shouldn't say even spin, just some of the stuff that's been leaked to the media about who might be chosen for certain positions in cabinet. And I am, I'm scared. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm scared to see who, what, what this could look like, what a Trump presidency and cabinet can look like. Over here in Arizona, Sheriff Arpaio was defeated by who's got Penzone? Yes, Penzone. Had defeated him. Finally, we are talking about now the one guy who was pretty much Hitler out here to so many immigrants. I mean, he was breaking up families. He he didn't care about any immigrants, black people. Oh, he locked them up, threw them in pink shorts in a second. He he was a proponent of tough crime and what Donald Trump was saying on his campaign, law and order. SB 1070 was a big, big push for jo- Sheriff Joe to push his own agenda on what he wanted to make the state look like. like. There's a reason why the FBI was after his ass. Mm-hmm. I believe they still are. Department of Justice, <laughs> Attorney General. Yeah. And so what they're saying now, what we're hearing is that Donald Trump is trying to, you know, is possibly bringing him, now that he doesn't have a job, now that he can bring him on as, I forgot, what, Homeland Security or something. Mm-hmm. Like, like we are talking now at a, a federal level. Yes. State level's one, not even, it was county level. And now state, beyond state and now federal, like country Across the country, overseeing ICE. Um, yeah, this, this is not, this is, is, is and, and I, and I, okay, let me go back a little bit because I'm stuttering a lot because I'm, there's just so much I want to say. I don't want, and, and I made this clear to everybody, was that I don't want to live and I refuse to live in fear. You know, yeah. so yes, I could be making up a lot of stories in my head right now of what a this cabinet could look like, of what Sheriff Joe could do. We don't know if he's going to get that position yet. That's the beauty. We don't know yet. So there's still time for um, the, the the public to voice their concerns and their opinions. Will they be at all viewed and taken into consideration? I don't know, but we don't know what's going to happen yet. And I don't want to give in to a lot of what the media has been given to tell us because again, we don't know if this is even true yet you know some of these bits and pieces may be just spewed out for people to have a reaction to go into fear base we don't know yet so all i can say is that um if that does happen uh we'll make sure to be in the opposite party to really monitor the hell out of them yeah they have to be monitored um i mean we have stephen bannon coming in this guy runs breitbart or at least he ran breitbart and we are talking about a divisive, uh, quote-unquote, news organization. So, already, you know, the people that he's... We're talking about Giuliani, Mr. Law & Order Giuliani, who tried to the stop and frisk. And now he said, no, that, you know, that, was, that, that was good for you. you know, no, it wasn't. It was, I think, 80% Latino and blacks that were being stopped and frisked. Um, and it has been deemed by the government as, you know, it was, it it was, was illegal. illegal. Mm-hmm. It was completely illegal and unconstitutional. Now, he wants to try to come in as a cabinet position... And bring that like the swamp. The Donald Trump said to drain the swamp of Washington insiders. Now, if you watch the uh, CBS interview that he had, 
he said, uh, the lady even asked him, she's like, you know, you were saying that you wanted to get rid of Washington Insiders and the people that you were trying to place in your cabinet, it looks like they are all Washington Insiders. He's like, oh, you know, but those are the those are the people that they have. You know, we have to start off with, he, the excuse he said was that we had to start off with those people because they are the ones who are most knowledgeable, knowledgeable about it. Mm-hmm. Do you see the irony in this? Mm-hmm. Donald Trump is supposed to be the outsider. You know, people are like, oh, my God, I got to vote for the outsider. He doesn't know shit about politics. He's not a politician, so he's going to be great as a president. You know, this is what people voted him for. And yet he's going to surround himself with people who are all politicians. And lobbyists. The, mm-hmm. Lobbyists, mm-hmm. exactly. All lobbyists. Yeah, the swamp. And like I had written on one of my posts, like, yeah, drain the swamp. But, you know, the swamp leaves the residue. And this is the residue that he's putting into place, into mm-hmm. power. And all of these people are divisive. They they will they, they haven't just divide like they they are pros at dividing the country. Right. So no matter what Donald Trump um says, like he's like, oh well, you know, I'm not going to repeal ACA, the Obamacare. There are some pieces on it, so we're going to look into doing that. Oh, we're not going to you know overturn Roe versus Wade, and but you know because the law is law. He said because that's the law, and the Supreme Court um had ruled on it. So. They also ruled on Roe versus Wade, you know, not on that, not on Roe versus Wade. Yeah, he said that about, um, God, what was it? I can't remember. He had uh, stated that about, not immigration, oh, gay marriage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was gay marriage. He had stated that. Oh, it's law. So, you know, it's, well, same with Roe versus Wade, same with Obamacare. Those are also laws, but mm-hmm. you are ready to do that. So don't, I don't believe him. Right. Is the world ready for President Donald Trump? I don't believe him, but we got to look at who's pulling the puppet strings. He's definitely a puppet. Yeah. And I do know this. I'm not at all for supporting, for imp- uh, uh, impeaching or kicking him out of office because I don't want a President Pence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is the dark lord. Okay. He is beyond scary to me yeah, of what evil. Pence is capable of because you can see and track what he's already tried to put in law and in, in legislation from his home state. So I don't want Pence to have the presidency. That's my thing. Pence tries to run on, you know, biblical things, Ugh. you know, that's where he apparently tries to get his strength from mm-hmm. the Bible, you know, so gay people, you will be at odds if Pence is in the White House in any capacity. And apparently Pence is the one also helping transition. I think yes. he's the one in charge of the transition team. Yes. So he's the one putting all of these deplorables in charge of this. And this is a guy who, uh, what, I mean, he tried to repeal the gay marriage. He, he was fighting. He's really against the gay marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, tried to make it to where it was legal for businesses to turn down. Um, they could turn uh, yeah. away any um, anybody that would come into their business that either was opposition of that uh, business owner's religious beliefs or was gay. Yeah. So we are talking about how the world is going to be ready for it. I know Angela Merkel had said something like, she's like, look, you had better be pretty much inclusive. Um, just know what you got into. And let's, let's be real. Donald Trump didn't want to be president. He did not want to be president. You can't convince me otherwise. Mm-hmm. He wanted to run. And I think he started to run just because he could. It was like, ah, you know, 17 people, whatever. They started knocking him down. Oh my God, look at this. People are responding to my fucking divisive shit. Like, I can say Muslims be, can, are this, and all these other people are that, and they're loving it. Wow. He didn't know that he was tapping into the alt-right. He was tapping into, you know, these white supremacists who, they want separatism. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they really pride themselves, not on whiteness, necessarily, not on them being emboldened to their white ancestors, you know, oh, you know, well, the Celtics had done this. Oh, I'm proud to be Irish. He's like, oh, you know, I'm proud to be Italian. No, Eastern European. No, so. they, they want WASP. They want it to be a white nation. These are the people who endorse the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klans are written, like, their newspaper. They themselves have endorsed Donald Trump. Now, think about that. What kind of rhetoric do you have to speak for the Ku Klux Klan, is, you know, for them to jump up like meerkats and be like, huh? Oh, my God. Like, what's he saying? That shit sounds great. Mm-hmm. To where they're like, this is our guy. This is our guy. He's going to put the quote unquote right people in place to make sure that we prosper. Mm-hmm. Because there's too much quote unquote political correctness. There's too much multiculturalism. You know, we have to be able to call black people nigger. We got to be able to call Mexicans wetbacks. You know, because I hate, I hate Political correctness. Why do you have to be able to say what you want to say? You know, it's called manners. 
There's nothing wrong with manners. Mm-hmm. I don't go to your house and say, hey, what's up, you fucking hick? You fucking, your mom's a bitch. What's up? I don't say that shit. It doesn't matter what I feel. Political correctness. Hello, ma'am. Hello, Mrs. So-and-so. And I am okay with that. Right. I'm fine with that. What is wrong with it? And it's, that's how I was raised. Like, you are you. polite. Treat others as you would like to be treated. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand where this, 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 this mentality and really thinking that it's okay to, to insult a woman wearing a Habib and feel like you can touch it and rip it off her head. Mm, that was tell, amazing. I know. And, that you, and, and to tell somebody, get out of here and go back to Mexico when that person wasn't even Latino. I mean, it's like, you, what did you, makes did, you... Th- did you see the, the little kid, the, the kids in school who are being handed that document by other students? By say, the, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, there was one by a, by, a, by a substitute teacher that told the students that your parents are going to be deported. Are going to be deported. This is a Trump president. Is the world ready for President Donald Trump? He looked in the camera, you know, only because he was pressured by the reporter on CBS to say, stop it, stop it, because what's going on are the protests. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had joined one, obviously, over in Las Vegas. We saw it, heard it outside, and there was a big protest going on. It was amazing. And uh, and props to the organizers. That was a great, yeah. great Whoever did well that, that organized was really protest. good. Um, and then afterwards, it's like, this was going worldwide. Or at least, I'm sorry, nationwide. Mm-hmm. Everybody in all kinds of different countries, thousands of people, are sitting there protesting. Because he ran on a campaign of hate. It's like, when you do this, I mean, think people, when you run on this, you can't unring that bell. It's like, this is what you were and you got elected. He didn't, I don't believe he wanted to be elected. He wanted a core constituency that he would be able to do a media company with. And these are going to be his people. Right. Little did he know these women. The, yeah. The white women, white women were the ones who voted him in. And oh, I got to say. Pussy grabbing. Like, I'm going to grab your pussy. You know, mm-hmm. you're a pig. You're a slob. I'm going to grade you on a rating. I'm going to reach you on a scale. These are women who have daughters and they have sons who do not want to grow up like Donald Trump, but maybe they do. But they are willing to overlook their own sexuality, their own worth, to pick a man who speaks against them to be president. And yeah. let's not talk about the 43% of the population that didn't even vote. The registered, yeah. qualified. The qualified, yeah. You're of age, you're able, you're capable, you're mm-hmm. alive. And all you have to do is go to the polls and try to avoid this from happening. Because say what you want about Hillary Clinton. Say what you want about her. She had experience. And she knew how to talk to the people. She knew how to talk to the people. This guy doesn't know how to, so he puts other people in charge who are a part of the swamp he wants to drain in order to talk to you. In other words, you have the same fucker in there that you would have probably voted for anyway, except this time they don't know how to govern. Not one piece of government he doesn't know. They, they criticized Barack Obama for being, you know... Um, Community activist. Yeah, he mm-hmm. wasn't ready for president, and now we have Donald Trump. Is the world ready? The world is... Uh looking at us like a joke right now from what I've been reading. Yeah, from what I've been reading, yeah. And I think we just pulled up a statistic today about a 30% drop of flights coming into the U.S. have occurred. So other countries don't even want to come visit us right now because that's how much of a joke we seem to So them. they're laughing at us. We are basically Carrie. They're all laughing at us. Yeah, they're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. Yeah, they're laughing at us because... Everybody out there who chose him chose a guy. You saw the shower scene right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, 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 like throw tampons at him. Throw tampons at him. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> anyway, you know what? We gotta we gotta bounce out here. We just had to uh, get that off of our chat. I'm sorry. I talked a lot and I took up a lot of Drea's time. I know she's gracious to let me do that, but I'm really passionate about this. I'll, oh. So you can take this out. So go ahead. You can hear us. You're gonna be. We're gonna be passionate for the next four years. How whatever media outlet that we'll have available to talk about what's going on in politics in our community, and you know this is this is what we do. And let us know. Come on, give us your feedback. Those the people that voted for Trump. Let us know. Call in or, or, you know, text us, post something on, on, our, on all of our sites then and let us know your feedback on this. So remember, you can always catch us on at Zod Andrea on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. 
and Twitter. Um, we're pretty much everywhere. Go to the www.zodandrea website and you will see everything you need as well as listen to some of the past episodes that we have and go ahead and comment on those too to see everything you do. All right? Peace out. Peace out.